Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here. Got my partner, Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Yeah. And an awesome, super special <laughs> guest today. We have Megan Likes. CPA. I didn't know you were a CPA. That's awesome. I'm not surprised at all. Um, Megan is an authoritative voice on all things related to accounting, but specifically, um, she knows more than anybody that I know about SBA lending programs and all the stuff going on with IDLE and PPP and the things that we talk about pretty much on a daily basis on this Facebook Live. So um, a lot of times questions come up and we're kind of speculating and saying, well, I'm not sure, but I think, and we look it up and it says, well, even the experts don't know for sure, but this is what they're guessing. They're waiting for more guidance, but uh we got the we got we, we got the best and the and the freshest information uh, there today. So with that being said, welcome Megan. Thank you for joining us today. Awesome, thanks, Tom and Liz. I just feel so honored to be like in between the two of you here. Uh, <laughs> pretty fun, and I can't believe you guys are doing this every day. Kudos to you. That is amazing to be able to keep up the fresh content. I know that it seems to just change constantly. Um, Tom and I were chatting before we got on live how I would go into a meeting and I would be paranoid coming out like, what did I miss? What caught on fire? You know, did the sky <laughs> fall? Like, and I literally felt like I had my hands on my desk and I'd be like, damage report, what's happening? Um, it's chilling <laughs> out just a little bit. Now I feel like it's much more like stealth attacks while I'm sleeping, you know, like they just drop these bombs kind of like last Friday when uh, and if I'm going to call it in the middle of the night, cause I'm in California. So we're going to say Western time in the middle of the night, they just like snuck in this application form for uh, loan forgiveness. You know, it's the application form that I've been the puppy waiting by the door for weeks, waiting for it to come out. Like, yeah. give me a sign, any sign what's happening. What can I do? What can I not do? Um, so yeah, we, we got an application form. It's kind of exciting. Uh, also, it fell short of what I was hoping for. <laughs> I was really looking forward to it having all the answers that I've been craving. And I feel like Tom and Liz, I've been that that trusted advisor who's been like, well, I don't know. Well, I don't know. And as a CPA who's kind of a know-it-all, that's really hard to have to say a hundred times a day or a thousand times a day, you know, like, well, can you check back with me tomorrow? <laughs> I might know tomorrow. Or yeah. oh, Isn't the real answer no one knows? Like yeah. No one well, and I've had some clients that have gotten really sassy. They're like, well, I'll just go to my attorney. Clearly he knows more than you. And I'm like, okay, good luck. <laughs> and then I have like some friends because, you know, I, I don't know you guys are like this, right? Like I live and breathe small business. Like that is, that is, that is like, that's my hobby. That's my livelihood. That's my family. That's my friend circle. That's like everything. Yeah. So I can't escape it because we're drowning, right? we're drowning. It sucks. We're fighting and it sucks and it's hard. And um, so many people have said like, oh, do you know through you, I was able to teach my CPA all these cool things. Like, <laughs> yeah, <it's awesome. laughs> you know, that because of you, I know this much more than my CPA. And I'm like, well, cut your CPA break. I, Because it's my first time on your show. I'm just going to start with this little preface that when this hit, I was tired. When this hit, it was March 15th. That deadline went by as if nothing had ever happened. That deadline went by as if the sky was not falling and people were not dying and the economy was not doing anything weird. It just passed, right? And I was already working 80, 90 hours a week when March 15th hit. Then this storm, I'm in California, really started brewing that week, the week of March 15th. We started shutting down city by city, county by county, and eventually statewide. And I was tired and I was tired because I was busy in tax season, like the most taxing yeah. part of my entire year. Uh, and it was just so exhausting, like so exhausting. Um, and so be nice to your CPA. Like it's not their fault that they couldn't keep up with it. Like the information changed a thousand times a day and they were already tired and they were trying to juggle April 15th deadline stuff that was not extended until very late in the game. And now, we're still tired because our tax season will never end. I am still in tax season. I yeah, will never be done. I am in my home office surrounded by tax returns still. And we're learning all of this guidance and we're trying to help our clients as best as we can. So I've been telling people every time I do one of these, like be kind to your accountant, be kind to your banker. Uh, it's okay if you're learning together, like this is all new. Payroll protection program loan was not a word until March 16th. 
Like we've right. never heard of a payroll protection program loan. Right. And and Mark Rubio, he was the person that championed this through and he is championing again this week. And I feel like I hope someday I get the chance to shake that man's hand because it's 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 a gift to small business. It's also been a curse for accountants and bankers and advisors like Tom and Liz, I am sure. Um, it's it's exhausting. <laughs> it's just so exhausting. Uh, and well, stuff. And you know, you're not the only one. You're not the only one that's exhausted. Everybody out there, and this just all of the chaos and all of the confusion and the the not knowing is exhausting. Yeah. Wasting all this mental energy just the amount of calories burned understanding a set of rules that are written only to wake up the next morning and find the web page is completely gone. It's completely changed. It's a whole new set of rules. It's like, huh, I'm starting all over again. Like yeah. So, yeah, that department of labor, like frequently asked questions and then the treasury frequently asked questions and they like, they haven't even bothered to change out the PDF URL anymore. They just change it. Like, so <laughs> I would screenshot it or I've had to print it. Cause I'm like, I'm relying on written advice from the people that write the advice that is changing while I'm sleeping. Like, and then it's not like they're redlining what they changed. You have to like, right. wait, I, this is what I Read thought. The whole thing again. again. Uh, yes. Last yes. week, yes. I think oh. it was like on Friday, uh, question 46 was like this guidance about the $2 million. Uh, so we're talking about the payroll protection program loan. There was a lot of stress about small business owners who was like, should I give the money back? Uh, you know, I was really worried about what happened with Ruth Chris and Shake Shack and how do we how do we interpret like access to other means, access to other capital. And every I mean, every small business owner I had worked so hard to help get a PPP was then like, I want to give it back. And I'm like, hell no, 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 no. We worked really hard. For that. We don't give it back. And they're like, well, I don't want to go to jail. And I was like, well, of course, I don't want you to go to jail. <laughs> like, a lot of the stuff that they're writing, back, back when I had a real job, I had a manager who had this term, he called it strategic ambiguity. And like when we we're putting proposals together, it's like, make sure you word it in a way that if it goes bad, you can claim that really wasn't what you meant and you can say something different. And a lot of the rules, the guidance that's coming out, it's like, they're not really giving us any exact answers because you, you get a feeling that they don't want to back themselves on a corner. Well, and I was really pissed because I feel like that's what they did with the Shake Shacks and the Ruth Chris's. I feel like, and I know that this is controversial to say, but you know, I'm just going to be me and say it. Like, I feel like they had every right to get those loans, that they had followed every rule. They filled out those forms exactly the way they were written. They, yeah. they took the advice they had. They leveraged the relationships with their banks as they should and they got that money. And I'm not gonna fault them for it. I I don't, you know, it was allowed and they did it, right? I, I and agree. Then, I agree with you 100%. I, I because, agree too. You know, they've got, I mean, they've got stockholders and there, there's no guarantee that any of those businesses are gonna survive at the end of the day. And the money that they gave back could be the difference between them surviving mm -hmm. and not surviving. And they're an employer of thousands of people who need jobs, yeah. right? Like. When I read the Family's First Act, oh my God, I I cried inside. I was like, this is going to be so bad. So horrible. Yeah. So bad. I, I was with you there. And then it turned out it wasn't that bad. It wasn't, it really isn't that bad. Family's First Act is actually kind of brilliant. It's like, if your staff are sick, don't let them come to work so that they get everybody else sick and then you go out of business. Pay them and we'll give you the money back in a week or in a month or in a quarter, right? Quarter. Yeah. Well, we're, we're giving it back. For my semi-weekly employers, they get it back in a week. Six days, they get that money back. So worst case scenario, you're floating it for three months, but now you've got the payroll protection program loan or hopefully you've gotten an idle loan or something. And um, yeah, so that that was like, I saw this train coming because that passed March 17th or 19th. I get those two. One of those, mid-March. Oh, hi, puppy. Uh, that passed March 19th. Hi, and who is that? I'm sorry. Leslie was asking where Molly Leslie was. Leslie asked where Molly is. Tom um, got that new puppy on Saturday. So, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so you, you know, puppies, puppies always take the line. Again. Let's see her again, please. I wasn't fully paying it. This is Molly. 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 O-L-L-I-E. 
Um, I know why. Aw, so I good golly, Miss Molly. Aw, and so she's your quarantine puppy? She is. She's my wing dog. Wing dog. I love it. So yeah, she's sweet. She's so sweet. So sweet and cuddly. She went awesome. to the vet today and got a shot. I think she's a little sleepy. Aww. <laughs> That's okay. She sleeps during the day and she whines and barks all night. So it's. <laughs> Sounds I feel like that's the payback for your neighbor with their uh, barking dog, Tom. Yeah, they uh, they adopt coon dogs, and they're very vocal. I do these Facebooks yeah. for my back porch yeah. sometime, and it's kind of hit and miss because a lot of times <laughs> there's. I digress, Megan. I'm sorry we interrupted. Please go ahead. That's fine. I don't even remember where I was. I was complaining about something. I'm sure, but so you were talking about. Um, what came out on March, either 17th or 19th? You're not sure. I was talking about the family's first train wreck that was like barreling towards every small business owner. And and like I like to say that that to me was the like impetus for 22 million job, lost jobs. 22 million lost jobs between March 17th or 19th, don't remember which, and April 1st when it came in effect. And um, and then it turned out it wasn't that bad. Like it's a hundred percent refundable payroll tax credit that applies to non. Like I consult with a lot of nonprofits that applies to nonprofits and for profits, small business, big business. It wasn't nearly as devastating as we thought it was going to be. But this legislation was coming out so fast, and it was changing so fast, and it was so scary. Um, yeah. And then we've had a lot of problems since then. Right now, I think we're at thirty six point five million unemployed people. Uh, California, we're saying 70% of people who make less than $40,000 a year have lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. 70, 70. Like, I can't even, I can't even fathom that number. That's just baffling to me. But we are going to make it through and states are opening back up and people are hiring. I mean, I don't know a single business owner that's not hiring right now, mostly because of the PPP and the headcount. But, you know, I don't know a single business owner that does not have a job listing out right now. Are you guys hiring? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Try yeah. to. The yeah. answer is better, right? Yeah. <laughs> but the flip yeah. side of it is if somebody is getting their unemployment with the federal bonus on top of it, you know, they're going to be applying for jobs. But it's got to be a really attractive job for them to walk away from the unemployment benefit they're currently getting. Yeah, so that's all another little bummer. I tend to be a little doom and gloom. I try and be cheery while I present the doom and gloom, but have you guys seen the Heroes Act yet? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Just saw that. But that was there. Uh, what I heard is the chances of that actually passing the Senate I are agree. extremely slim. Yeah, so I'm it, trying not to not to get freaked out over that. But it's a preview. Basically, it's a negotiation. So. Yeah. You know, some some of that will become law. We just don't know why eventually. Well, and it's huge, right? I mean, they it's huge. They made it really, really big. Um, so there's a lot of stuff buried in there. But I I'm watching very carefully. Like July 25th is like a little heart on my calendar because that's the day that this federal unemployment kicker turns off, right? So July 26th. I should have my pick of 36.5 million unemployed people and I should get the best of them. Right. And so when the heroes act came through and it was like, Oh, we're going to extend through the end of the year. I was like, no, 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 no. I have a job. I have, I have lots of jobs. I have like, no, 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 they don't need it. Don't extend it. Um, so it will be interesting. I think those grumblings and murmurings are always like a little nerve wracking. Uh, I'm really enjoying the mumblings and murmurings that I'm hearing this week in Congress. Mark Rubio, I said, you know, Paycheck Protection Program loan champion is talking about extending the eight week window. And I know for businesses that have been closed or completely shut down, what a relief that would be. What an amazing like life. But Megan, but, Megan, but for those of us that, you know, started our eight week and like just started pouring funds out and paying all this money to find out that they're extending it another eight weeks is like, seriously, you couldn't have told us before so that we could have made, you could have made, I could have made better choice. I would have made different choices that could have been better for my company if I'd known 16 weeks. Just like, 
I mean, I feel like I lost a little bit of traction because I got kind of quiet the past couple of weeks. I've been really waiting on this guidance because the way I read the PPP was there, the doors were wide open for planning. Like it was ripe for loopholes. You could just yeah. you done a trillion different things. And what I said was just hold off, like chill out. Let's let's ride this out. Let's see how it goes. And so Liz, I'm, I'm sorry if, if you weren't able to totally write it out. I think it's still good news because I hope that what you notice by pouring out that money, what we noticed with my husband's business, and I, I feel like if, if you don't know me, we own a window cleaning company. Um, and so what we noticed there was how much cash we've accumulated since we got the PPP because 40% yeah. of my expenses are not my expenses right now. And so our motivation very early was we are going to make as much money as we can over the next eight weeks because that's free money. Like that's ours to reinvest in the business or, or to extend further. So I still think I, it's a good deal. I I, still it is good. I'm not, yeah, don't get me wrong. Like it's, it's uh, like first world problem whining, right? It's like, gosh, I'm only getting this much free money instead of this much, you know? Yeah. Spend no, I, all this time trying to figure out what the rules are and building strategies around it. And part yeah. of it is trying to anticipate how the rules are going to change because they are going to change. We had Joe Walsh on yeah. yesterday who is is really active in the state of Maine. And he's talked to like Susan Collins office and she's one of the centers that co-sponsored, you know, the, 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 the bill with Rubio and, he has it on good word that, you know, they're going to be able to take it from eight weeks to 16 week window. And it's like, we're going to get more money. And he goes, well, they're talking about that. So at the end of the day, they want us to hire people and they want us to keep people working and we're going to keep getting help. And, and that's, that's a really important thing to remember, Tom. Like that's a really important thing to say. And that's what I've said it every time I've talked about the PPP is the intention of this program was to pay people. And if you've paid people, you are doing the right thing. And if you've paid them generously, good for you, right? It, it's okay, it, as long as that's the intention. And I had so many business owners who were like trying to get their hand in that pot. Like, how do I, how do I get the most out of this? How do I like hire my family and do it? And I was like, you are missing the whole point of this program. The point of this program is to help your business stay more viable. And when your business stays viable and you employ people that make you money, that's when you get your part back, right? That's yeah. when this all works out full circle. So the idea of like, you know, motivating, incentivizing, attracting, retaining staff for your company to make money in your company that will in turn help the owners. It's, you know, I, I, I really had a hard time in the beginning when people are so short-sighted about like, well, I'm going to, you know, and I, so many people, there's this like condition that seems pretty clear in this application that we got last week. They're capping and they're capping all salaries at a hundred thousand and they're prorating that for the eight week period. So really the most you're going to be able to take out of this. And if you're a self-employed sole proprietor, this is not true for you, but for everybody else, you're looking at about 15,500 bucks. Now there's a couple of workarounds that I've been kicking around and playing with, especially for my really like high earner clients who do really well when they're self-employed. But for the most part, like that's about as much as you can, as you can do. Um, I'm I'm in the modern cleaning page, and Lisa's celebrating that she just hired a full timer today. So congratulations, Lisa! Oh, we're in different pages. Yeah, yay! Very congratulations, good. Lisa. Also, Stephanie called me out because technically I'm on vacation this week, but Tom asked really nice, and so here I am on my vacation day. But Stephanie said, "I can't believe this is Megan taking this week off because she saw me on a Facebook Live this morning." Before I'm I was taking the week off. <laughs> but you've already admitted that this is kind of your hobby and you enjoy this anyway. So right. even when you're on vacation, this is what you do for fun, right? right. And I went to my garden this morning and I like tried to get the schmutz off my shirt before I got on the live. And you know, uh and my my window it, cleaning, I know. Yeah, my my vacation week is to you know help my window cleaning business because we've uh we've hired and and we've like revamped our whole training program and our onboarding sequence and we're going through a lot of HR stuff right now, like setting up for bamboo HR and getting a lot of this onboarding stuff automated and streamlined. So I'm practicing what I preach in my cleaning business, which is we've been cleaning house and using this time and using this money to fix some administrative 
quirks that we were getting lazy about fixing because we didn't have to, but now we should. So we are. And that's what we've been recommending, right? Stay busy. Everybody keep moving your, your business forward. Now's the perfect time for training and, and solidifying your systems and so many great opportunities right now that, you know, not good, but if it hadn't been for the pandemic, we would not have all of these uh, opportunities that we're having. Oh, looks like we have a question here. Ginger wants to know, did she hear that owner salary isn't included? I think she's talking about the 1923 per week dollar amount. So I think Ginger depends on how your business is organized. So if you're a sole proprietor or if you have a partnership, then it's not included. Uh, it's it's completely dependent on your 2019 numbers, which I have heard murmurings that they are renegotiating, which I hate. I hate it when they change the rules after the fact. And I think I ended up on a tangent, but that's when I was complaining about like Shake Shack and and um, and all of that was I was my only complaint was they Treasury changed the rules after mm -hmm. they got the loan. They got the loan following all the rules and then treasury changed their mind and that's what's made me so nervous about this program is they're rolling it out so fast and they're making all these decisions and all this legislation that has never existed before an entire infrastructure around it and you know they went so sba wrote 14 years worth of loans in 14 days that's mm -hmm. insane to me right and the okay. volume of money that they pushed through when this program started when they pushed it down to the lenders there were like less than a thousand SBA approved lenders on that list. By the end of the first round, there were almost 5,000 SBA approved, approved lenders. And the way I describe it is a giant game of telephone. You've got like treasury whispering to the SBA, who's whispering to the lender, who's whispering to all of their thousands of employees. Like Bank of America said That's that. That's good. That's good. Oh. You and know, then you have that lender who's one of 8,000 whispering to a business owner who then goes, you know, and calls their other business, their friend and is whispering to them. And it was just, it was horrific. It was so stressful. <laughs> and it's going to happen again. It's going to happen again here in, next month. And, and just well, within two weeks. weeks, right? We have to hear within two weeks here. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, we've got, we got a big chunk coming. Yeah, the two week window, you're referring to like the first people got their PPP monies on April 7th, sure. I believe. Well, I mean, the program launched April 3rd, and I think some people had it as early as the 6th. Yeah. Six or seven. And part of this legislation that we're talking about extending the time, they want to get that in place before the first people's window expires. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm assuming, I mean, makes sense to me. So we call, we call this Facebook Live Smart Business Moves, and contractually, I'm obligated to use the word unprecedented at least once every Facebook Live. So there, Liz, we can go ahead and check that off our list today. Yeah, and a lot of what we're talking about is this is truly unprecedented. It's We've never seen this before. And you get in the context of the amount of SBA loans, the context of the people filing unemployment claims, um, it's just the numbers are 10x greater plus in so many different directions than we've ever seen before. So, you know, buckle up. We've got uh, a lot of exciting stuff ahead. And oh, so we, we, Megan Ginger is asking about um, being an S Corp. Okay. So, so if, sure. if she's an S Corp, my understanding is she's limited to that 15,500 number and she is included there. Because she would be an employee. She'd be getting like a W-2. Yep. And your distributions do not count. So if you're an S-Corp who's in the habit of taking very low wages, stop it. That's very bad. It opens you up to a lot of audit. This is your warning sign and bells and whistles because it hurt you on your PPP application, the fact that you were taking low wages. But now you can fix it because you can increase your wages. I've heard murmurings, I haven't, I don't think I've actually read it, that they're really wanting you to not give pay increases of more than 25%. So I'm recommending, even though I don't have any authority to recommend this, that you, you be careful with your pay increases. Don't go more than 25%. When we get clarity, then you can, the way I look at this application right now is we're just going to give them a gross wage number. We're not even going to break it down between bonuses and salary and pay increase or anything like that. So this application still has a ton of loopholes in it, which is why I kind of read it and then I didn't forget it, but I was like, well, 
I'm still waiting for that guidance. Like I still yeah. need, there's too many loopholes still in this application, but Ginger, the way I read it now, you're capped at $100,000 divided by 52 weeks times eight weeks. That is your, that is your maximum wage number. Uh, one thing that I thought of, I well, thought of it a couple of weeks ago and then my high S corp, uh, like the, especially the ones that really don't have employees. Cause I, so I'm a CPA who helps small businesses in California, only service businesses, mostly nationwide. I'm helping home service. So window cleaning and maid service and lawn care and things like that. But in my practice in Davis, I help like accountants and attorneys and, uh, you know, lobbyists and, you know, all sorts of other types of professional services who make a lot more than a hundred thousand dollars as S corp owners. So one thing I was thinking of is, seems to me and they're they might close this they might not but there's maybe a loophole in here related to retirement contributions so if you don't like that fifteen thousand dollar cap maybe you can contribute more to retirement as an employer contribution now depending on what kind of retirement plan your business has uh we don't know uh you know you're gonna be limited like you're gonna have to do the same for everybody else as you do for you um, or maybe you have time to set up a fancy retirement type plan. Maybe you have a time to set up a profit share that you can tack onto your 401k or something where you have more discretion over the employer contributions. And here's why I'm recommending that. And I don't know if I'm recommending that. Actually, first, let me start by my disclosure, Tom. I am a CPA practicing in Northern California. I am not your CPA. This is generalized advice. This is not specific advice. I'm not telling you to go do this, but I'm telling you, to think about it and maybe have a conversation with your CPA about it. Um, so now that I got that disclaimer, Liz, another check mark out of the way. Um, but what I'm saying is like, you know, maybe there's an opportunity here where you can you can put some money into retirement and that would make it eligible for loan forgiveness. And the really cool thing, CARES Act, CARES Act was 900 pages. The CARES Act is the one that actually launched the payroll protection program loan. There's only one tiny component of the CARES Act. The CARES Act, 900 pages, passed on March 27th. And in the CARES Act, they had a ton of retirement planning strategies in there. A ton. Like, I can't wait to get back to my little individual clients, my little old ladies that I've been ignoring and neglecting for the past two or three months while I saved hundreds of small businesses because they're going to be thrilled with the CARES Act and the stuff that's in there. Some of the stuff in there is that you can take money out of your retirement account this year penalty free, regardless of how old you are. Which That's is really great cool. information. This is a weird workaround loophole that might get closed, but as it stands right now, I think you are capped at your fifteen thousand five hundred and whatever thirty-seven dollars. I don't remember the exact number, but generally, but maybe you can make some employer retirement contributions, and maybe that would be eligible for forgiveness. And then, if you really need the cash, then maybe you can take that money out. And worst case scenario, you make that contribution and you find out that it's not treated as a grant, it's not forgiven as for the PPP, but I mean, it's not like that you're committing fraud or anything. You're just like going to get that money. You know, you're going to have to pay more of the loan back than what you were hoping to, which well, that's, that's the other thing. Like, so the intention of this program is to pay people. Not necessarily owners, but people, right? That is the intention of this for people. If you cannot financially responsibly spend that money, then it becomes a short-term loan at a really low interest rate. Yeah. That, that, that's what we keep saying. It's and a 1% loan. And if yeah. you really want to live a debt-free life and you really want a debt-free business, I obviously have those business owners in my life who are like, I'm allergic to debt. I can't have any debt. And I'm like, then give it back. Uh, give it, give it, give it back. You know, you have six months loan deferral, so you're not going to have to make any payments for the first six months. You will be accruing interest. I've heard all sorts of conflicting statements about what happens with the interest if you get forgiven or not forgiven, but just give the money back then. You know, well, let, let's see. We do have a couple of questions. Did you have something real quick, Tom? No, just just the whole idea of of making sure that you know, if we're cleaning homes, if we're generating revenue, if customers are paying us for doing work for them, you can't lose. It's a win. Yeah, it's a no, win. You, there's no way to lose. Just make sure that you aren't sp spending more of your PPP money than 
what you know it's going to salary just make sure those salaries are, are are cleaning homes you can do some training and stuff like that too but you don't want to go crazy with that you want to make sure that you're generating enough revenue because as megan pointed out earlier you got no cost to good soul that's 100 percent, not 100 percent, but well and you do have yeah. some cost goods sold but the majority of your cost goods sold are covered right in a, rel in a relative sense exactly. you'll never yeah. make as much money per job as you will over the eight week period that you have your ppp fund and i hope i hope that everybody who's listening has had that mind-blowing experience because for me even though like tom says i was the sba loan whatever you want to call me i didn't click for me until that first payroll with our window cleaning company and when we ran that first payroll and we do profit first method and my husband, I, I always like, I can't make it through a single talk without talking about my husband. He's like allergic to computers. He didn't graduate. Well, he did graduate high school, but barely, he didn't go to college. He doesn't like numbers. He, he's like allergic to not money, but almost. And um, so we do his cash flow planning on a whiteboard every week. And that first week when we process payroll through the PPP and we like dumped a ton into savings, he was like, wait, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, tell, tell Jeff I said hi, Megan. He's, he's an amazing guy. He's awesome. He's been working his tail off. I mean, oh, of course. He took this like call, like, you know, the interview question that always says, like, if you could start all over again, what would you do differently? And Jeff was like, challenge accepted. We're starting all over again. Because <laughs> we, we laid everybody off March 16th, except for our office manager. And we dropped down to an owner operator. And he just rebuilt this thing. Like, he's coming out of it so strong. It's, it's fun to watch. Like, all the things I've been, like, we got lazy. We were profitable. We were making good money. We were fine. You know, there were a couple quirks we wanted to fix. But why, why, why rock the boat? And now it's it's cool. It's really cool. I'm excited. So yeah, I'm excited too. Okay, let's see. We got a bunch of questions. Let's get to. Um, all right. Susan Strayer wants to know. She says her PPP was funded on May 12th. What date should her first payroll happen? She pays weekly. Okay, so in this application, there's a new weird thing happening. So in this application, they say that you can do an alternate eight week period that starts the first day of your next pay period. Now, practically, here's what I'm gonna remind you, and this is what I'm reminding everybody. The person who is going to be in charge of your forgiveness is an administrative assistant who has no idea what payroll is. I'm gonna say that again. The person who is going to be in charge of forgiving your loan application is going to be an administrative assistant who has no idea what payroll is. So. I would not over what your payroll is, what your individual payroll is. They or don't know when your period is. Like they've never been an employer. They've never seen a 941. Like they went through a crash course of training from their bank and their bank is completely understaffed. And they're the ones that your fate of forgiveness lies in their hands. Now, when I say that, I say I'm doom and gloom, but then there's sunshine. So the sunshine part of that is your bank does not want to keep this loan. They want it forgiven. They want to get their money from the SBA and they want to move on with their lives because 1% is not a note that they want sitting on their bankroll, right? So right. keeping those things in mind, just because you can doesn't mean you should. So Susan, I would say May 12th, even though this application says maybe it's an alternate date, I think it's going to be really hard to do education at your banking institution to make sure that they understood that alternate date. Like I'm hearing horror story, stories from big banks like Chase. So SBA and Treasury have made it abundantly clear that your window starts the day your loan gets funded. And Chase has said, Chase has said, no, it starts the day you signed your loan documents. Bank of Oklahoma has said, no, it starts the day that you signed your loan documents. So you and, might not even seen the money uh, until two weeks after that. And your window, I have one client and hers, it's a five day lag. Wow. So you can't, obviously, you, you lost a week basically because you can't but, pay people if you don't have the money. But maybe that's why they, they did this thing on the ends. Now, the way it's written now is you can supposedly, like if you're, you got funded on the 12th, you can pay on the 13th. So that money was actually, 
um, that that, uh, that debt debt was incurred before your PPP started, but they're saying that now that money can be forgiven, and on the opposite end, you can they're going to whatever money you earned if you earned say through the thirtieth, if the payroll isn't until the third, you're still going to be able to claim that too. That you don't have to adjust payroll. Yeah. So I feel like. Okay, I feel like when I read this application form and I, I did other reading about it, um, I try and go like to the intention. And then I also try and think about practical purposes. Like I, I yeah. think about that administrative assistant and, and I am the girl that is volunteering at my bank to do training for the staff to help with the forgiveness process, because I need the inside scoop of how, this bank, I have 25 yeah. loan applications at this bank. Not me personally, but with my clients. I yeah. took the bank where I had the most loans and I was like, I would like to help you through this and I would like to help train your staff because I need to be on the inner circle of how, what are your standard operating procedures? And here's the scary part. Your bank doesn't have standard operating procedures for this yet because <laughs> they don't have treasury guidance yet. So it is uh, unprecedented. It's unprecedented. Oh, he said it twice, Liz. Yeah. For Tom. <laughs> The double duty day. Uh, well, Megan, you're bringing out the goods. <laughs> your bank got the same application on Friday, right? So they're going to interpret yeah. it their way. And SBA has made it abundantly clear this is a lender led program, which means your lender is the boss. SBA, they're backing it, but your lender is whoever your lender is, that's who you get to deal with. Um, so I feel like I went down a rabbit hole and there was a question that maybe I missed. Okay, we, we, we do have another question here. It, it, no, you it, you said yeah, something really right. important though that the bank doesn't want to hold that note. They want to forgive everything, so the SBA will basically give them the money back. What risk is the bank taking if they forgive a hundred percent of it? Does the SBA ever come back and say, "Hey, wait a minute, we don't agree with with what you just did here"? Is the bank I, taking risk? Absolutely. So there will be, you know, the lender. The lend so SBA can come back to the borrower, but they're more likely to go to the lender, especially if your loan amounts less than two million. So that that's why your bank is going to like bank, and I hate to bash on Chase Bank, but like Chase Bank saying like, no, we're choosing our date. It's because it's their like their business. It's on the hook, right? So however they however they're interpreting those rules and however they write their SOPs, that's what you're stuck with. Because because we've heard we've heard that before too that some people's bank or, or bankers have said they're going to be very conservative in forgiving the funds because they're afraid that the SBA won't agree with any monies that that, that they forgive. Which is why I recommend to everybody: just because you can doesn't mean you should. Keep it simple. Stay within the intention of the program. Now, Liz, I when I read this, and I remember the rabbit hole. I read this as stick with what you were. So incurred or paid, incurred and paid, incurred, paid. What's the difference? So yeah. I know a lot of accounting speak, but incurred means, you know, were you, was it like, you know, so you have, you have employees that have worked and out, the people you, earned it, but you haven't paid them yet. Right. But you owe it. Right. So right. most businesses, especially most small businesses are cash basis taxpayers. And when you're a cash basis taxpayer, all that matters is when you paid it, right? On your tax return, all that matters is the date you wrote the check or you swiped your credit card. That's the day you get to deduct it. Doesn't matter when it yeah. was due. So it's a little bit of a loophole. But when I read all of this, the way I interpreted it, and remember, I am not your CPA. I am giving generalized advice. But the way I interpreted it was, if you're a cash basis taxpayer, all we care about is the date you paid it. Now, a loophole that I think they were trying to close with the incurred or paid was prepayments. So prepaying rent, prepaying utilities. And I'm not sure if they closed those loopholes, but Jeff got his PPP, Jeff's my husband, window cleaning business, got his PPP funded on a Wednesday or a Thursday. I paid payroll on Friday and I used my PPP funds because on my tax return, that would count. It wouldn't have counted in the previous tax year. It would have counted in the year that I paid the payroll. It doesn't matter when I incurred it. So I took that first paycheck and that went against my PPP funds. Now I'm in California, least employer friendly state, probably in the entire United States. And I have learned very much that you don't mess with payroll, right? We don't mess with when we pay people. We don't mess with their wages. But 
California has no problem with me accelerating a payday. California says, if I wanted to pay my staff every single day, I could, right? I just can't hold on to their wages longer. So on the tail end, I'm telling people, talk to your bank, figure out when did your 56 day window start? And I don't like saying eight weeks. I like saying 56 days because everybody's eyes get really big. That's a totally different number than, than eight weeks. So talk to your bank. When did your 56 day window start? What was that date? Then go find 56 days from that date. Mark your calendar. Okay. Then I say, jump ahead two days. Cause we don't want to cut it close. Like this money has to clear the bank. You can't write a check on the 56th day and get it forgiven. I don't think that check has to have cash because your bank cares about cash because that's how they're able to see how everything went, right? So I'm saying 54 days from the day your period starts and see when your payroll hits around there. And if you need to scoot your payroll up a couple of days or even a week, do it, do it. And if you have to run an off payroll payroll, run an off payroll payroll. Um, I really think based on what I've read and it's possible it's going to change a hundred times between now and then. So today is May 19th. <laughs> Specific time. So May 19th, 246 specific time. Yeah. I think the day you pay out that money is the day that it counts towards forgiveness. And that's yeah. my and that, that, that makes sense with the way they wrote it too. You know, they're willing, they'll work on both sides of, of that that 56 days again. So I, I think that makes perfect sense. Okay, we do have a lot of questions. Um uh, I have a question about PUA. I don't know what PUA is. I'm guessing you do though, Megan. I have an LLC, but don't have employees yet. I'm getting PUA and fill weekly claims every Sunday. Should I claim all my income to subtract expenses? My business needs to operate. Thank you. Yeah, so I think the PUA is the unemployment, and maybe that's your state unemployment. And I'm guessing they're also getting the federal kicker. And so okay. um, I have seen lots of strategies related to owner operators who are eligible for unemployment, but were also eligible for the PPP loan. And I think you cannot commit fraud. Like, you do not want to mess with the SBA. That's good. Okay, so we're, gonna we're start all on board with that. <laughs> okay, so we're not going to mess with the SBA. The SBA will literally put you in jail. And I don't want any of you to go to jail. So you have to disclose everything. So I think if I were on unemployment and I were using that hat, and remember, I am a CPA, which means we, I'm a very strange person when it comes to fraud and ethics. And I, I'm, I'm crazy, like, when it comes to numbers, okay? But I think... <laughs> If you get your PPP payment as an owner operator, that's okay. You're allowed to do it, um, but you need to disclose it and you need to disclose it to unemployment. And it's important that you do that. I think from a practical standpoint, it would be much easier to disclose it as a lump sum. So if you took, now I was worried in the beginning, I said, I don't want my owner operators or my sole proprietors to pay the owners in a lump sum. I'd rather them create behavior that looks like they get paid at the same time as their employees. But if you have no employees, you can pay it as a lump sum and then you need to you need to report that to your state. And what it might mean is that you don't get unemployment that week. But hopefully it won't affect future weeks. But you have to you have to disclose it. You have to be honest. And it's weird because yeah. I know it's not payroll. When you say disclose it, disclose it to the whoever the representative is at the unemployment Awesome. You know, Liz said, I don't know whose question was, but that on Sundays they're filling out their unemployment paperwork. Absolutely. So on that Sunday, form, you would say, I received this money. Now, she asked about income and expenses and and that's not your PPP is not based on income expenses. Your PPP is your Schedule C from 2019, line 31. And it's that number divided by 52 times eight. That is the max that you would be allowed for forgiveness for wages to you. And then you can do rent and you can do interest and you can do utilities, but that wouldn't affect your unemployment. So the only thing that would affect your unemployment is line 31 from your 2019 Schedule C. And talk about, well, I'm not going to curse, but it's a mess for accountants because now my, my sole proprietor clients need a tax return from me. Like I told everybody, no tax returns. I'm busy. I'm saving all the jobs in my town and I'm, you know, saving the small business world and I'm too important to do your tax return right now. And I'm sorry. And if you fire me, I understand. And I love you and I'll get back to you later. And now suddenly I've got all these sole proprietors who are like, 
I need a Schedule C, like yesterday, right now, so I can get my PPP money. Well, I no wonder I haven't been sleeping and I'm not on vacation, Stephanie. I want to be on a <laughs> I want to be on a beach with a big drink right now. <laughs> so you need to you need to get one of those fancy backgrounds and fake it, Megan, because it doesn't look like you're going there anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But All if right. you don't have a special need, your 1040s aren't due until when? July, July 15th. And you're not getting charged as penalties or interest or anything if you owe money. No. So Families First Act was bad. Not necessarily bad anymore. People's First Act, very good. People's First Act is the one that says, like, the IRS is too busy to come after you right now. So people first. <laughs> we're, 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 we're doing other things. Now, be careful of your state. Um, I, I like to say this. So I have clients in Idaho and in Idaho, they're due June 15th, which means that those tax accountants, they're going to, you can't do an Idaho tax return without a federal tax return. So those tax accounts are either going to be extending, which you can still extend till October, or they're going to be getting tax returns done by June 15th. So every state is going to be slightly different. Keep an eye on your state. The other thing is, is Liz, you called this free money. And I hate using the word free, but I feel like the PPP money is practically free money with the, exception, with the exception of state taxes. So yeah. some states have said, whatever is forgiven, we are going to tax. And California, where I live, is one of those states. So I've told every client, like, this is free money, except it's going to incur this much tax on the money that's forgiven. So I just, you know, check with your state that feds are their own animal. Every state's its own animal. Like, yeah, there's some discussion at one time that even at a federal level it might be taxed. Has that been resolved? It was resolved from the beginning. There, there was no intention to tax the forgiveness. Now, I like this is a great year to retire on a beach. Like, I think this might this might be the retirement year for me from my accounting perspective because, ah, okay, so not taxable on a federal level. So whatever's forgiven, you don't have to pay tax on on the federal level. But here's the thing that they're negotiating. And that's, I mean, I have so much gray for a 34 year old, very recently 34, but this is really stressing me out. Uh, you're not gonna be able to deduct anything that you pay with this money. Right. And that makes sense to me, right? Like no double dipping, it was free, it was free yeah, money, yeah. you shouldn't deduct it. But practically speaking, how the heck am I gonna know when I go to do your tax return next year, what pot of money you use for what thing? Yeah. I, I'm already stressed about like the the idle, the economic injury disaster loan amount, how we have to offset our PPP loan forgiveness by your advance amount. And like my clients aren't going to remember. And if you don't have good books, you're not going to like money's been coming into your account and like money's going out of your account. And how do we know? Like, oh, it's going to be a nightmare next year. And I have 900 pages of tax planning strategies that came out on March 27th that I'm going to have to sort through for my for my clients. So it's it's a mess. But your oh, immediate good. problem is PPP forgiveness. That is our like our current very you know unprecedented Tom and very very time sensitive problem right now. All right. So we do have a few more questions, but I don't want to miss out on. Uh, earlier, it might even have been off the call. You said that you have a couple of idle loan pieces of new information that would be good yeah. to share. So yeah. I want to grab those now. I'm sorry, you guys, about the questions. We'll get to them now. Okay. Yeah. I feel like um, it's been, it's a roller coaster, right? Like, how do I focus my energy? And I used to talk about like profitability and good bookkeeping habits and like tax saving strategies. And now all I talk about is PVP and idle. That's it. That's all I talk about. And it's so boring. I and do I, it, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Idol was really exciting like two months ago, um, especially if you were a Californian because we were the first state to declare all counties as federal disaster areas. So that was really fun two months ago. Then it kind of chilled out and there's been all these blips. So this week, here's the latest. And this is I'm just going to say it and I'm going to give you all the caveats and all the disclaimers. But so last week, uh, the week of May 11th, the SBA has refused to acknowledge that this is happening. But I absolutely know that this is happening. They gave the economic disaster loans a new haircut. And so originally, the economic disaster loan was intended to be a long-term bridge loan up to $2 million 
for 30 years at 3.75%. So the terms are still the same. Unlike the PPP program where the terms changed three times in two days, uh, yeah, it was the terms are the same because the disaster loan program has been around for decades. It's, it's nothing new. It's been around for a long time. The economic injury disaster loan part related to the advance, that's new. So we've seen like, you know how, remember it was a $10,000 advance and then it was like, just kidding, we're going to do 1,000 per employee. And up so to 10, up to 10,000 with a cap of 10 employees. Okay, so that drama happened. Then like in early April, uh, they said, eh, we don't have enough money to give everybody up to 2 million. So we're going to just give up to 15,000. So they gave it a haircut at 15,000. That haircut lasted six days. And for me, I think those were maybe my worst six days out of all of this because that's when I started like hyperventilating and realizing like, you know, for the businesses that are closed, a bridge loan might make a lot of sense. It might be the lifesaver you need to get through that closure. And then you have a long term time horizon to make the money back, right? You're this is a short term problem and you're going to you're going to make the money up and you're going to pay it off over a really long time. And it's not going to hurt your cash flow later. So when they gave it a fifteen thousand dollar haircut. I started freaking out and I was like, this is it. Like $15,000, who wrote this crap? Like $15,000 doesn't even go one day or one week in most of the small businesses I advise. Like that is, that's nothing. That's like a sneeze, that's nothing. So they fixed it and they were like, okay, just kidding. We got more funding. We're gonna go back to 2 million. So they went back to 2 million. They were hanging out at 2 million. And last week, now SBA has not acknowledged this. You won't find it in writing. I do an SBA webinar three days a week. They refuse to acknowledge it. Every time it gets asked, they say, no, that's not true. But I have I have hundreds of clients. I know that this is true. SBA gave it another haircut last week, $150,000. Yeah, we've Absolutely. seen that. We've seen yeah, that. How, how is that? That's not written anywhere? No, it's not written anywhere. We all know that's true. What the hell? No, but we all knew the 15000 was true also, and it changed. So what I'm advising... I don't remember that. <laughs> well, it, well, it happened. See, California, we... California, they say we got screwed a little bit on the first round of PPP funding, which is turning out to be a good thing. But we were way ahead on economic disaster loans because you needed that federally declared emergency before you could apply. So Californians were applying much earlier. So we tend to be a little bit earlier in this process. So now yeah, we've been seeing lots of people get rejection letters from economic disaster loans. I'm also seeing lots of people get this $150,000 limit. So what I'm saying is, if you're sitting okay on cash, like if you got a PPP and you're kind of able to hoard a little bit of your earnings right now and you can afford to wait, I would hold off on signing that loan document. And I think we're going to see something come out of Washington in the next week. I don't know. You know, we talked about Heroes Act. It made it through the House, unlikely to go anywhere in the Senate, but it's going to, they're going to do something. And when they do something, sometimes like what happened in early April is they lift the cap again. So yeah. with the economic yeah. disaster loan, they say you can go back and ask for more money in the first six months. I feel like they don't have the manpower to process the ask for more money. So if you could afford to wait, I would hold off on signing the loan document. And I would just wait and see if they re-increase that limit. Um, and, and and maybe they won't. Maybe they'll say, no, this is it. It's really going to be 150000 But I feel like I'm going to call uncle a little bit because they said that was 15,000. It only lasted six days and then they went back up. So I, if you can afford to hold off, I would hold off on signing that loan. And a lot of people have asked me, like, I got the advance. Now I'm getting my loan offer. I forgot I even applied for the loan. I don't want the loan. Do I have to take it? And the answer is no, you don't have to take it. It's okay if you took the advance and you don't want to accept the loan offer. Um, I'm saying, you know, I want you to be very fiscally responsible. I think I'm in good company here with Tom and Liz who will agree with me. You know, just because you get offered a loan doesn't mean you have to take it or you should take it. But if you need help getting through this period, this is a good opportunity to get through this period. And what I like about the economic disaster loan is it's interest free and payment deferred for the first 11 months, which means it's essentially 11 months of free money. And with my husband's company, we were lucky to get an economic disaster loan. And it was a really big number. And we stored it in a super secret savings account. We are absolutely not going to touch it until the PPP program is completely done and settled because I don't want to get in trouble for double dipping or using it for the same thing. 
And my goal is I'd love to give it all back in 11 months with a big smile on my face and a much better business. Um, and that, that's my plan for it. And it's going to help me breathe easier through whatever uncertainty we're headed into. Um, yeah. Now, I, I'm not I'm not your CPA. I'm not your wife. I'm not your like financial advisor. So I want you to do what's right for you and your business. But sometimes debt can be a tool. And sometimes taking on debt like a bridge loan can help give you some breathing room through a really, really difficult time. Most large companies, publicly traded companies, I mean, it's 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 common that they use debt as a tool. Doesn't mean that we use it irresponsibly, but during these uncertain times, it's better to have the money and not need it than need it and not have it. And the SBA is making it really easy for you to have that safety net, that cushion. Take, and the only like said, stick it away and pretend, you know, forget about it. But if you need it, you've, you know, you have a lifeline. And the right, guys, I have to stop you. You guys okay. could just talk forever, but I got to get to some of these questions or people are going to be hating on me and I don't have the answers. So okay, Megan, but, they're on you. But I have All to right. real quick. I have to, I'm going to, sorry. But the disaster loan, um, the only rules related to the money is it has to be used on operating expenses. And so why I said hold off on the PPP is like finish your PPP program, get your forgiveness. And then if you have to start drawing on it, you can draw on it. So that's one rule. The other rule is you cannot use it to refinance debt. So when I said the PPP was cheap money at 1%, I don't know about a rule about refinancing debt with that 1% loan, but there's absolutely a rule about the 3.75% economic disaster loan. You cannot use it to refinance existing debt. So don't try it. And when you read that note, which I hope you read every loan document you ever sign, they have an eight year look back period and they are aggressive and they are mean. So, you know, if you accept the loan, follow the rules. And one of the rules is you can't refinance existing debt. So debt is a tool. Use it wisely. I'm not opposed to the program, but know the rules that you're accepting. And, and that's two that's really important. OK, now, Liz. Right. Oh, so that that brings me to one of the questions, though, is paying paying credit cards, would that be considered refinancing debt? So Jeff, my husband, who's adorable, was like, well, what if we just made really big credit card payments? <laughs> um, I wouldn't do it. I would use your PPP okay. cushion that you're building. I'd keep the money really separate. Um, I would use other operating cash that you have. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with it. Okay, sounds good. All right, Ginger wants to know, she says, did she hear right? that if she has more full-time equivalents on June 30th compared to February 15th, that there's no wage reductions needed. Wage reduction. Why would we need to re reduce wages? Yeah, I don't know. We don't want to reduce yeah. wages. No. No, I never want to do that. For any reason, don't be reducing wages. That's going to get us in trouble. The whole including, point of- Including now, like don't give a raise that you can't sustain. Like, don't give a raise that you're gonna have to take away in eight weeks. I, you know, we doubled our bonus program during this eight week period, but we're not giving big raises that aren't sustainable. So don't take away wages, don't lower wages, pay your people accordingly and fairly. Yeah. All right, um, let's see. So I got funded today. Um, I just checked, it. do I need to report it? Yeah, no, that one you just need to track it for right now, Leslie, they don't want you turning anything in yet. Um, my bank hasn't even read the forgiveness loan. Yeah, that's, you're not the only one there. Um, regarding May 12th funding date, my staff has just returned for training starting tomorrow or Thursday. So I haven't run payroll yet. I wouldn't run payroll till May 28th, typically. Does that sound okay? I, I'm, I'm sure, I guess. I mean, stick with your payroll period that you have now. I'm pretty sure this application says something related to that. Um, for some of my really small businesses that are like the single member S corps that pay monthly payroll, I was like, maybe you wanna, maybe you wanna change that up. Maybe now's a good time to change your pay periods to more frequent. But um, yeah, I would try and stick to what you have. Already doing. Let's okay. go down to one minute. <gasps> Ah, you have a dilemma. Okay. Some of these I know the answer to, you guys. So hold Write on. Down. We'll, 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 you we'll keep talking, talking while I'm reading. Um, just real quick. Um, 
for you guys who've been asking about the training that we're doing through Modern Cleaning, uh, the COVID-19 class is, is here. A lot of people are still taking that class. Um, you know the drill on that. Professional house cleaning, same same thing. We've got uh, class number three that, that's coming out Thursday. Um, awesome program. Cleaning business today. Um, if you haven't subscribed, uh, sign up for our newsletter here. Got some new content and the super secret uh, coronavirus dash load or download link that gives you all the goodies that we uh, talk about on smart business moves every day is on this link. So there you go. And we're right at a hour, Liz. All right. Dominique who says, Liz, ask my questions. All right, so I'm going to ask this one. Um, so uh, Dominique, he received his PPP, but he was denied his idol. They said he didn't show he was impacted. Should he dispute it? Um, and, and if so, then what should he say to make sure that he gets it? But also on top of that, our understanding is that they're only accepting agricultural applications for the idol now. So, so I have two comments about that, and I'll be quick. Um, so one is if you were denied and it said economic injury unsubstantiated or something like that, on that letter, there's a place where you can contest it. And I absolutely think you should contest it. And I think you should keep it simple. Uh, there's like a fax number, a mail number, and an email. I don't know. I'm an email person. I would start with an email. I would write a very generic, plain English email that's no more than like five lines that says, I am experiencing economic injury. Here is my year-to-date number from last year and my year-to-date number for this year. I'd even do the math for him. I am down this percentage. I would say attach, please find last year's tax return, last year's year-to-date P&L compared to this year's year-to-date P&L. Hopefully have QuickBooks with the percentage difference. Um, thank you for your consideration. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, I appreciate your help during these unprecedented and trying times. That's, that's what I would say, Dominique. Uh, and then your second question right. about agricultural loans, as my understanding is that it's only related to new loans. And my SBA people who refuse to acknowledge the fact that these are being capped at 150,000 are saying that they're gonna reopen the economic injury disaster loan program soon. So they're gonna reopen it to everybody. Now take that with a grain of salt. I haven't read it anywhere, I've only heard it, but it was a, a reputable source and um, Probably well, just that's good you know, because some people were left out of the loop and some people were really upset. They're like, but I didn't apply yet. And we're like, well, it's, late, it's but. good and it's bad. Like, I think if they intend to reopen it and they don't get more funding from Congress, then we won't see the $150,000 cap lifted. If they do get more funding, right. we'll see the la the cap get lifted again and hopefully we'll see it reopen. But if you got funds but got capped, say at the 150, and they fund it, can you go back and ask for more? They say that you can. I have no idea how that works. Um, when you get that email that says, you know, your loan has been approved, uh, it says you have to log into the system within 30 days. So do that. Don't wait more than 30 days. I'm talking like one to two weeks probably. Um, then once you log in and you look at your actual loan documents, it says you have 60 days to accept the terms of the loan. So I feel like you have wiggle room for them to sort out their funding. Um, and I feel like it would be easier to ask for additional funding before you accept money than it would be after. But I, I this is all educated guesses. I actually have no basis for these assumptions. I, I'm just, I'm guessing, but I, I feel like it's practical, so. Okay. Okay, so we try really hard to get off these and be respectful of everybody's time. Uh, we have gone over today seven minutes. I apologize for, to everybody that um, we out try so hard to. Um, I'm going to keep track of your questions here and we'll get an answer tomorrow. Um, thank you so much, Megan, uh, for the information. And I know, like, like me, everybody really appreciates having an expert come on and, and tell us their interpretation because it's still so so nerve-wracking so it's super helpful having you come on and, and help everybody thank and you so I much like to say, I like to say, and i think liz and tom do a great job of this is you are not alone this is not your fault you did not cause this you are in <laughs> company and together we're going to get through this 
keep fighting because you're important. Like your business is important and the struggles you're going through right now are important. You're making a difference. Please keep it up, please. So that's <laughs> Yay. Awesome. Thank you so much uh, for helping uh, us out today. Bye -bye. We'll see you guys tomorrow, five o'clock Eastern. Take care. Be safe. Bye, y'all.